Hello, everybody. It is that Sunday School Girl of that SundaySchoolGirl.com. I am thrilled that you're here to check out the lesson for this Sunday, March 13th. Why I have to start every video with some type of jam music, I don't know. And sometimes I can find one that's relevant to the lesson, and sometimes it's just an expression of the fact that I am so happy that it's Friday, and particularly on today, because this is the start of spring break and I am I'm very excited about that so I have great things planned for the weekend and I hope that you do as well first of all yes I hope that you had a spectacular week and that whatever you do with your families this weekend is going to be fun but most importantly you missed a shameless plug last week you know you did so here it is I want you to make Sunday school something that you do together do it as as a family do it if you're a single do it with your friends you know what? You be, a, be the alarm clock and actually your friends are going to need you this week. That's a great place to remind everybody early that this is daylight savings time. So this is the one that I don't like as much only because there will be people who will miss Sunday school this week. Like in the fall, it's great because people who really didn't intend to be there end up being there. This is the one I want to help you on because if you show up late you're gonna miss it all like if you're an hour late for Sunday school you're probably missing the whole thing and that's not what you want to do right yeah okay right answer the right answer was no I don't want to miss Sunday school so don't forget to spring forward this Saturday night before you go to bed I am super excited about our lesson this week before I jump into it if you are new around here welcome you have just joined the largest cyber community of Sunday school students on the World Wide Web. And so you're in class with more than 1,000 people around the world. I shared uh, something this week that was absolutely overwhelming for me. I took time to look at the stats on uh, that SundaySchoolGirl.com and I was blown away that in the last 30 days that Sunday School Girl has been viewed in 28 countries and so it was very humbling and overwhelming because I don't always think about the reach I think about sort of the reach inside of the spaces that we know and people that we're connected to but thinking about the worldwide reach and how awesome it is that we together are studying God's Word so Welcome to the community. Tell someone about it. We're growing every day and it's amazing. As a matter of fact, because you're watching this video, that means you're seeing the YouTube clip. So I need you to press that little subscribe button down there so that you never miss anything great that's happening. In the spirit of great things, I have two major announcements that will be made next week. And you will miss them if you are not connected in some way to that Sunday School Girl. So the best way is to stay subscribed to the channel, but also don't forget about our other medium. So if you'll go onto the website and make sure that we've captured your email address and make sure that you have liked the Facebook page because that's where information will be flowing. And I promise you do not want to miss these announcements that are coming up. We're ramping up to the one year birthday celebration and I promise you we're going to we're going to just go all out celebrating and enjoying what God is doing. So I'm glad that you're here. So last weekend, before I get into this lesson again, I had my seven-year-old niece with me for the night on Saturday night. And she says, um, you know, can I use your computer? Yeah, sure. You know, great. She's seven. Give her earphones, a computer. She's good for like an hour. It's wonderful. It's great. And so she goes onto YouTube and she's watching the video from last week. And then she goes back into the archives and she's watching others. And she comes to me and she says, in this video right here, which is the one I did two weeks ago when I was sitting in the law school, she says, you were too quiet on this video. You were not excited. Your voice was not excited enough. And you're supposed to be excited when you talk about Jesus. So thank you to the kind feedback of a seven-year-old out of the mouths of children. If you want honesty, get a good child in your life. They will be honest with you, but there will be no more videos recorded in quiet spaces in the law school because apparently she had no appreciation for that. But thank her for her constructive feedback. Let's talk about the lesson for this week. Most publishers this week have called this lesson Simple Faith. The Bible basis is Mark chapter 10, verses 17 through 31. The Bible truth, 
Jesus showed that faith in God makes it possible for people to sacrifice their all for the benefits of others. The memory verse is verse 21. And the lesson aim is that we will know the facts of the rich young man's encounter with Jesus. Celebrate the direct link between making sacrifices and receiving God's salvation and commit to making greater sacrifices for others in the name of Jesus Christ. Throughout our lives, we work to accomplish various levels of independence. If you watch a baby, they are so excited when they discover their own voices. They make cooing sounds. They'll cry sometimes just because they can and it gets a response out of people. Then they learn to blow bubbles and there is no telling a baby to stop blowing bubbles because they're having an amazing time. Then they learn how to walk and the joy in their eyes when they can run away from you in a room and you're chasing them. That is just fantastic. I was again with my niece last weekend and she asked me a question and my answer was, you read it and tell me what it says or what we're supposed to do. And the excitement that you could see in her by just knowing that she could read and even the big words she was able to sound through them and work it out was a major sense of accomplishment. Now, Auntie realized then that there's no more spelling words when she's in the room or talking above her head because if she doesn't understand something, she'll just go Google it and find out what you're talking about. So again, independence. And even as adults, we want to be independent in our finances. We want to be independent in our thoughts. And that's really important to us. And we'll see that theme somewhat this week in this lesson. We are talking about the rich young ruler, and I always caution us when we're reading stories that are familiar, not to approach them with a familiar lens. So if you had any version of an illustrated children's Bible, yeah, this story was in there. Remember the colorful, colorful pictures? And I could tell you the whole story of the rich young ruler, but probably hadn't paid as much attention to other details in the story. So I hope you'll take the time and have that experience as well. We are... In the Synoptic Gospel, again, of Mark, I talked about that last week, and working toward one of the most important events in our Christian uh, faith, which is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I mentioned that last week. And so what is happening in this week's lesson is in between the transfiguration on Mount Hermon and the triumphal entry, which we know as Palm Sunday. And Jesus is meeting so many people along the way. He enjoys meeting people. He enjoys talking to people and he meets lots of different types of people and they have needs. And by this point, his reputation precedes him. So when he comes, people are um, happy to be in his presence. They are excited to get in his presence because most of all, I know this is a word we love to use now, but when they come into his presence, it is absolutely life changing. And so we see that today with this young man who. Um, comes to Jesus with a question of his own. And Jesus has a deep conversation with him, which I want to be clear up front, has almost nothing to do with money. It really has to do with the inside, uh, his heart, the inside, and his ability to exert his independence in a different way, which basically means backing down quite a bit so that Jesus can be Lord of his life. So in chapter 10, Although we start at verse 17, you know, we always read up from the top. So if you read from the top, you'll find that Jesus has talked about marriage. He's talked about divorce. And then there's that piece where they bring children to him and he, the disciples are like, uh, no, 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 take them away. They're bothering him. Jesus is like, no, let the children come to me. Don't tell them they can't come, you know. Forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God, because there was a quality in children that Jesus, even in this lesson today, will refer back to because there is an innocence about children that really reflects how we ought to approach our relationship. Jesus is on his final trip to Jerusalem, and a young man runs up to him, falls on his knees, and says, good master or good teacher, what must I do to be saved? Now, verse 17 is packed with things that will make you think. The first thing is, I know that we refer to this man as the rich young ruler, but how do we come up with that? Because the scripture never calls him the rich young ruler. It's in verse 17 that we find out that he's young, check. Verse 22, we find out that he has wealth, that he has riches. 
And if we cross-reference with the other Gospels that tell the same story, we find out in Matthew 19, 20 that he is young. And it's in Luke 18, 18 that we find out that he is a ruler. So there's our rich, young ruler. Now, spend some time thinking about this. Being rich, it's not a problem. Wouldn't we all like to be rich? Being young, not a problem. We have awesome times in our youth. In fact, uh, I love listening to the seniors who will go back and tell you about my heyday and what I was doing in my heyday. And then to have positions, authority, influence. People love that kind of stuff. And again, there is nothing wrong inherently with any of it. The question comes with the self-reliance that we have to guard against with being too comfortable inside of any one of those things that causes us to believe that we don't need anyone, but most importantly, that we don't need to have a dependence on God. So this young man who runs, as Jesus passes through, there is a sense of urgency. He has no intention on letting Jesus get away without asking his burning question. I've got all the money in the world. I have everything that I need. I have uh, anything that I don't have. I have access to it. I can buy it. Someone will get it for me. Yet there's a question that I have and only Jesus has the answer to it. That question is, what do I do to inherit eternal life? Again, a couple things that I know. At least he knew that there was something more that had to be done and that he should aspire or desire eternal life. But then his question was, what do I do? It was about a list. It was about something I can uh, do in myself. It was never an opportunity to explore what it means to have relationship with God. And he didn't seem to understand that being good is not something that we can create, that we can grow, that we manufacture. The only success that we have in Christian living is accomplished by grace through God. And so he missed the very essence of what the opportunity was. And Jesus responds to him and he says, you know, you know the commandments and the commandments that Jesus brings up are very interesting. They are really the ones that deal with how we treat our neighbor. They are the murder, adultery, steal, false witness type things. But he never mentions the commandments around having relationship with God. And when Jesus dealt with him, I also know that the scripture says, that Jesus looked at him lovingly. Like at no point was Jesus overly judging him for his misunderstanding. And I think that's an opportunity with us. When, when people have questions, uh, as we have the opportunity to be a light to others, that we should always look on them with love, just as Jesus did. But the young man says, listen, commandments, check. I got that. I've kept the commandments since I was a kid. That's just what I do. I mean, I'm a rule keeper. I know how to follow the rules. And Jesus said, yeah, that's true. But there's one thing that you still lack. Um, what you lack is understanding that this is really an inside job. And so here's what I'm going to give you. It's a challenge. What I need you to do is all that stuff you got, I need you to sell that stuff. Like desire nothing but me. Seek nothing for yourself. Give it all up and be willing to follow me. But for that young man, that ask was too hard. He was not willing to give up everything. Even though the Bible promises that there's great treasure laid up in heaven, he was very satisfied with his treasure right here and right now. So the Bible says that he went away grieved. I noted again that someone who has everything in the world, you can have all of the money and still not be happy. So when he left, he left grieved. He still wasn't happy. He still wasn't satisfied. He still was not fulfilled. Um, again, because he was not willing to do what Jesus would ask. And Jesus used that after the young man went away as another teaching moment. Again, these last moments as he's going to Jerusalem, and he uses it with his disciples to say, you know, let's look at what just happened here. And I think I mentioned last week the importance after major events happen of just pausing to look at, let's figure out what went on here and let's see what learning we can get from it. Isn't that what we do in our lessons each week? It's Peter who speaks up in response to Jesus. You're surprised, right? No, because Peter always had something to say. And here he says, well, Lord, we gave up a lot. We did that. We gave up our careers, our family, all of our stuff to follow you. It cost us something to follow you. So we're good, right? 
And Jesus was like, eh, yeah, you know, thank you for that. But let's just be honest here. There's no one who sacrifices, who gives up things for me that won't be rewarded. As a matter of fact, those who give up the most and have to depend on me most, they're going to be first. And those who didn't make the same sacrifice, well, they're going to be last. So the last shall be first and the first shall be last. Let's talk about my key learnings from the week. First of all, the world does not revolve. I know that's hard for us to hear, but the world does not revolve around us. We are designed. God wants us to have a total reliance and a dependence on him. It's not good enough to just be a good person who does good things, but we have to have relationship. And every day, God wants us to live lives that are surrendered to him and that show others that he is working in and through us. Our lives are denials every day of the things that we want to do, the things that our flesh wants to do, not because we can't do them, but because we desire to live a life that reflects God's glory and a life, most of all, that pleases him. And when we do that, that's what opens the door and others want to know what it is about our lives that makes us live in these ways and they are interested in it. They too will ask the question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What do I do to be saved? Next, our lives are not simply meant to be an external transformation. Doesn't matter to me whether you wear dresses all the time, makeup, no makeup. I have no issues with any of that, but it's not about your bumper stickers. It's not about t-shirts. Thank you. God bless you, Maja David of royaltymindset.com. If you're not following her, particularly if you are a young adult, you are missing amazing inspiration and she is a phenomenal motivational speaker, but it's not about my t-shirt. If on the inside, my heart condition is ugly. It's not about an external look. Looks don't save us. But lastly, we cannot simply be fans of Jesus Christ, but we have to learn and be committed to being followers of Jesus Christ. I hope that we've met all of our goals this week. We've studied together. You know when you go into class, don't embarrass me on Sunday. Get in there, raise your hand, let's participate, let's get it done and enjoy your classes. But most of all, when you leave class on Sunday, let's know what it means that we can activate this lesson in being committed to a dependent relationship on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Don't forget your Sunday school selfies on Sunday. I will see you in Sunday school. Bye-bye.